the president. She is the president of the International Federation of Adapted Physical Activity, of which I am the past president. And so Dr. Sit and I uh, exchanged the gavel at the International Federation of Adapted Physical Activity Symposium uh, this past summer in uh, Dunedin, New Zealand. She's the former president of the Asian Society for Adapted Physical Education and Exercise, ASAPI, and her research interests involve physical activity and sedentary behavior in children with disabilities or spe special educational needs. She is committed to promoting their physical and mental health and social inclusion through adapted physical activity and sport. Dr. Sid, it's a true pleasure um, to have you join us today. And thank you so very much for doing this, particularly recognizing that it's 3 a.m. for you in Hong Kong. Uh, these sessions um, have become quite international in scope, and we're very fortunate and grateful uh, to have individuals like you join us and participate in these seminars. And we do upload them onto YouTube, and so they are available and they do get downloaded and viewed uh, considerably following the actual presentations themselves. Uh, so just watch, you know, I'm just saying that. So, you know, you may want to choose your words carefully just in case you don't want uh, them to be trending on, on social medias, you know, in the next couple of hours after they're viewed. So Dr. Sit and I, as I mentioned, are connected to the International Federation of Adaptive Physical Activity. And she and I have presented and participated in a number of conferences and a variety of research uh, projects. And it's uh, it's a real pleasure to see you online. And thank you very much uh, for agreeing to participate. So Dr. Sid, I'll pass it over to you. Um, now, Leticia, are you able to assist with the slide deck? I'm not sure what the conversation was between you and Dr. Sid as it relates to how we're presenting, but I'm flexible as to how we want to move forward with that. I believe Dr. Sid had it set up. Okay. So okay. Cindy, are you ready to upload your slides or how do you, what's, what's, what are you most comfortable doing? Um, I, I I will share my PowerPoint later on. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, thanks a, a lot, um, Derek, for inviting me um, to speak at this uh, seminar. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm honored to be given this opportunity to meet you all here. I also like to sincerely thank uh, Derek. Uh, I just mentioned the past president of uh, AFAPRA uh, for inviting me to share my work with you. Of course, my sincere thanks uh, go to Leticia who uh, coordinated this uh, seminar for us. So my presentation today is about uh, promoting physical activity and health in children with disabilities through schools. Uh, in particular, I would like to discuss a uh, school-based uh, physical activity promotion strategies uh, granted by the inclusion spectrum framework for this group of children. So let me... Um, use share screen um, to show the PowerPoint, okay. So can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Okay, good, thank you. You're All welcome. right, okay. All right, so actually um, David already uh, uh, gave you all a very nice introduction about me. So um, I'm Cindy, um, I'm with the Department of Sports Science and Physical Education, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And I serve on several local international organizations in different capacities in the field of adaptive physical activity, just like um, David mentioned, I'm now the president and fellow of AFAPR. Um, last year, I set up uh, the Society for Adaptive Physical Activity of Hong Kong, China, and so I'm also uh, the founding president. Uh, before I did my um, physical education and sports science, actually, I um, did social work. And so that's why I'm a qualified social worker in Hong Kong. So with the academic training background in both social work and exercise science, I'm very keen to integrate uh, social work principles that is helping people to help themselves with exercise science concepts. So that's why a major portion of my work has been with children with disabilities. Primarily, my research interests focus on investigations of the levels and correlates of physical activity in this special population. I'm also interested in um, the development and assessment of school-based interventions for children with different types of disabilities or special educational needs, SEN. 
In my presentation, first, I'd like to talk about uh, disability and physical inactivity, which are closely linked to each other, and global health recommendations for children with disabilities or SEN. Second, I will introduce to you our work on the Hong Kong Power Report Card that focuses on children with SEN. Third, I would like to share with you a school-based physical activity intervention granted by the Inclusion Spectrum Framework in Hong Kong Special Schools. Finally, I will end my presentation with a key home message. Uh, we all understand that um, disability can be understood uh, as an interaction between individuals with health conditions and personal and environmental factors. Uh, disability is part of the human condition, which means that almost everyone may experience it at some point of his or her life. It was estimated that more than 1.5 billion people live with some form of disability, and approximately 240 million are children and adolescents. Despite the known health benefits of physical activity, um, evidence indicates that children with disabilities are less likely to participate in physical activity, and they are more likely to be obese and have mental health problems than their peers with typical development. The total burden of disability associated with NCDs, such as cardiovascular disease, has increased by 52% over the past three decades. Uh, the WHO uh, Global Disability Action Plan indicates that the burden of disability can be lessened by addressing reduced physical inactivity. There have been global initiatives for physical activity action plans. I'm sure that maybe you are very well aware of this. Uh, so for example, in 2018, the WHO set targets for a 10% relative reduction in physical inactivity in children by 2025 and a 15% by 2030. However, uh, with the influence of the COVID-19 pandemic in the last few years, uh, achieving these targets seems challenging, especially for children with disabilities. In 2020, WHO released the first Global Physical Activity and Sentinel Behavior Guidelines for people living with disability, including children, with, um, uh, children and adolescents. Um, they recommended that children should engage in at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity daily. Even in Hong Kong, we say MVP is 60, uh, while limiting the time spent in sedentary, especially recreational screen time. So basically every move counts, any amount of physical activity, even if less than the WHO recommendation is beneficial to persons with disabilities. So no one left behind. Disability associated with physical inactivity is considered as a global public health issue. Uh, I really like this uh, paper very much, which was published in Lancet uh, in 2021. Um, this paper reported the known health benefits of physical activity, um, such as improved uh, cardiovascular fitness and mental health outcomes among persons with disabilities. And this paper also um, introduced some sort of uh, meta-analysis showing that health benefits can be achieved even with less than 150 minutes of physical activity per week. So however, uh, evidence indicates that persons with disabilities are up to 62% less likely to meet uh, the PA guidelines and are at high risk of serious health problems related to inactivity such as cardiovascular disease and obesity. So that's why in this paper, uh, the study offers um, called for physical activity action plans to promote empowerment, participation, and inclusion so that persons with disabilities can be given more opportunities to fully participate in physical activity. However, it is commonly found that persons with disabilities face barriers, stigmatization, and discrimination 
when they assess health and health related service or strategies. Um, the Active Healthy Kids Global Alliance is another global initiative uh, that aims to promote physical activity in children and adolescents worldwide. Um, it is considered as uh, the knowledge transfer initiative. Um, so this alliance um, produced uh, the physical activity report cards. Um, the president is uh, Professor Mark Chamberlain, uh, University of Ottawa, Canada. So maybe some of you are familiar with report card and even him. And so the report card is a synthesis of the most recently available data related to physical activity of children in a given nation or region. So in other words, it is not a rigid study or a new national survey. So uh, this report card uh, aims to consolidate existing evidence, uh, facilitate international comparisons, encourage evidence informed physical activity and health policies, and improve surveillance of physical activities, enhance uh, facility opportunities for physical activity among children and adolescents worldwide. And I'm sure uh, Canada has also had uh, their own report card uh, targeting um, children uh, with typical development and recently also uh, children with uh, uh, living with a disability. Uh, and it's in Hong Kong and our multidisciplinary team of my university joined uh, uh, the Active Healthy Kids Global Alliance in 2015. And then we reproduced, uh, reproduced uh, the Hong Kong report card for children with typical development. And you can see the roadmap here in 2016, 2018 and 2022. And the co-leaders are uh, Professor Stephen Wong and uh, Dr. Wang De Wan. And we also developed the Hong Kong Power Report Card in 2019. And we are now in the final process in producing the 2022 Power Report Card, but we already had the data and the data uh, has been published uh, in international journals. We used a systematic process set uh, by the Active Healthy Kids Global Alliance and searched uh, the best available data on nine indicators from the past 10 years. So you can see nine indicators here. Uh, the indicator basically consists of five behavior indicators. Um, here, overall uh, physical activity, organized sport participation, active play, active transportation, sensory behavior, and also the four contextual factors that influence these five uh, behaviors. So we have here family and peers, school, uh, community and environment and government strategies and investments. So here you can see our photos here that we um, had the press conference uh, in 2016, 2018 and 2022 in Hong Kong um, for children with typical development. And since then, we also produced our own power report card in 2019 and 2022. So you can see that at that time in 2016, uh, we considered nine indicators. And then in 2018, uh, the team uh, included uh, three new indicators, uh, physical fitness, sleep, and obesity. And since then in 2022, uh, the team adopted the same 12 indicators in 2022 version. But for our power report card, uh, in 2019 and 2022, we used the same nine indicators as we did in 2016 for children with typical development. So this uh, is the background. And here uh, you can see, um, according to the predefined uh, international benchmarks, uh, we assigned a letter grade for each indicator using the grading scheme here. So there are grades ranging from A plus to B minus, and then F. And INC was given if there were um, insufficient evidence to assign a letter grade. So across the nine indicators, um, I just presented two common indicators, overall physical activity and central behavior here. So at, on the left side, you can see a letter grade uh, for these two indicators for children with typical development. So I use uh, the P 
pink light orange color, something like that, <laughs> to illustrate you know, the data for children with typical development. So as you see in 2018, and I, I didn't present and include uh, the 2016 data here. So in 2018, uh, both indicators received a grade C minus, which means that 40 to 46% of children met the physical activity guidelines of 60 minutes of MVPA per day. So only around 40 to 46% of children uh, met this guideline in the national benchmark MVPA 60 per day. And they had no more than two hours of screen time per day. This is an international benchmark for sedentary behavior. So when we look at the grades in 2022, there were deteriorating trends in physical activity and central behaviors. And the Hong Kong children were lacking behind the global average. So here you can see here, the global average PD data, all right? And what about our children with disabilities or SEM here? So on your right side at the green boxes here, you can see a letter grade for the same two indicators. In 2019 and 2022, Hong Kong children with SEM performed the worst in overall physical activity among the line indicators. And they received a grade F in overall physical activity indicator, meaning that less than 20% of them met the MVPA 60 guideline. Similarly, there were deteriorating trends in physical activity and sexual behavior as you compared uh, the year uh, 2022. So in brief, uh, the findings of our report cards indicated that regardless of having SEN, Hong Kong children's physical activity and sensual behavior deteriorated over time and they fell behind the global average. Of course, the situation is even worse uh, in children with disabilities than those with typical development. And we also found that more than half of the indicators could not be graded due to insufficient data. So uh, basically we just assigned uh, a letter grade uh, for the four indicators only. So five of the nine indicators we gave INC, all right? So in other words, uh, there are many missing research gaps in the field that for our researchers, you can look at those indicators and then conduct your study that could, you know, um, um, understand uh, the physical activity, uh, behavior, and um, their contextual fact, uh, factors uh, according to the predefined international benchmarks. I, I think we also have similar findings um, when we had, uh, including Hong Kong, you know, 14 countries or jurisdictions uh, participating in the power report card globally. And we, we also found lots of INC uh, grading um, in many countries or jurisdictions uh, in this uh, Power Report Card initiative. And in our Hong Kong Power Report Card uh, 2022, we assessed the results using a SWOT analysis. So when we say SWOT analysis, uh, we want to look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So in terms of strengths, successful strategies in Hong Kong included increasing, uh, increasing awareness of health associated with physical activity, collaborative efforts from various government or non-government organizations in providing physical activity support for children with disabilities and their families. Witnesses were lack of adaptive physical activity training to teachers and community coaches, limited physical space and facilities, and inactive and busy working parents. Opportunities or strongest work cultures in society, especially after Olympic uh, and Paralympic Games in Tokyo and also uh, the Asian Games. More funding to support disabled sports by the government, increasing number of innovative and evidence-based physical activity interventions in school and community settings. Examples of threats uh, were emphasis on academic achievements rather than sports in Hong Kong and prejudice and discrimination towards special populations in society. 
So based on this as for analysis, um, in addition to our report card uh, findings, uh, overall speaking, there's a pressing need uh, to enable children with disabilities to fully participate in health enhancing physical activity through multi-level stakeholders, including researchers, school teachers, parents, and community partners. So now I would like to share my project, which aim to empower children with disabilities to be physically active through a school-based physical activity intervention. In particular, I also make use of the uh, in, in, uh, inclusion spectrum framework uh, to guide um, developed um, uh, our intervention uh, protocol. So in 2019, our project team was very pleased to get funding for the Hong Kong Jockey Cup Charity Trust. And we developed a three-year project that target children with four disability types, uh, visual impairment, hearing impairment, physical disabilities, and intellectual disabilities in spectrum schools. And although it was finished, um, we are now, um, it's a secret, okay, <laughs> uh, talking uh, with uh, the Hong Kong Jockey Cup, they would like to extend uh, uh, the, the, the project uh, for another three years. So we are now um, discussing uh, this possibility. All right, so um, in this uh, three year project that just finished and I was the principal investigators and we also have three co-investigators. So we use the concept of sport with the limit. Uh, the objectives of this project was to promote uh, children's active behavior and improve their physical and mental health. We also aim at advancing professional competence and practice of physical educators, as well as promoting social inclusion between children and, and, with, and with their disabilities. So we are very pleased uh, to have Ms. Cartin, UNESCO Chair, serve as our, as our honorary project advisor, and uh, uh, Professor Martin Brock, um, who is the former, former president of FAPR, <laughs> and also Mr. Ken Black as our project co consultant. So we work closely with different partners and including overseas APA associations, of course, a FAPR at the time. Uh, I was very pleased uh, to get support from uh, David, uh, our former president. At that time, he was the president. And we also work closely with uh, the president of the European Federation of Adaptive Physical Activity. And at that time, I was the president of Asian Society for Adaptive Physical Education Exercise. And also, uh, I work with local associations, including Physical Fitness Association of Hong Kong, China, and the Education Bureau of the Hong Kong SAR government. And we also work with a Global School Program and SDSN Hong Kong to further enhance the project impact. So basically, we used a multi-level intervention approach at school, family, and community level. So at school, um, here are the key um, intervention components. At school, we promoted a quality PE. Uh, in other words, uh, we encourage teachers to engage their students in MVPA for at least 50% of their lesson time. So in doing so, um, we provided polar PE solution system consisting of heart rate monitors uh, so that teachers were able to keep track of their students' physical activity levels. So other than uh, asking the students to, to put on their uh, armband uh, heart rate sensors, we also provide uh, each participating school with an interactive uh, electronic whiteboard and an iPad. And so the teachers can monitor the students immediately uh, during uh, the PE class and simultaneously. And we also developed an e-booklet in Chinese and a demonstration video so that the teachers uh, know how to um, put on their heart rate monitor and set up the system. And the teachers can uh, download the documents and follow the demonstration video. And the teachers found these kind of uh, resources very useful. Apart from optimizing quality PE, we introduced uh, four non-traditional adaptive sports to increase a student's interest and participation. Um, we introduced um, aerobic dance, curling, goalball, and sitting volleyball. Uh, teachers could adapt and modify sport equipment and gain rules 
based on the developmental needs of their students using the STEP principles that I'm going to introduce to you later. We also work with families of children with disabilities. Um, we, we, uh, we produce uh, home-based videos and provide each participating family with a family toolkit, uh, such as hula hoop, uh, bean bag, so that uh, they could follow our videos to do exercise with their children together. In particular, at that time when we uh, launched uh, this um, program, um, we, we all understand we are facing, you know, um, COVID-19 pandemic. So that's why um, we were not able to conduct face-to-face -face training workshop or even um, organize an inter-school competition or fun day or whatever. So that's why we have to rely on um, online um, platform um, to upload the uh, training videos and to also organize some webinars and, and so on. So here we also um, uh, produce some um, um, videos uh, to introduce um, um, how to maintain the equipment and, and so on. So at that time we um, produce curling and uh, you can take a look, of course, um, um, although um, the, it is um, in Cantonese, but we also uh, have the uh, bilingual narratives so you can um, Take a look on this account. I think it's quite uh, interesting and helpful to our teachers at that time. Okay. 基本器材包括地虎球、球杆同埋唔同大细嘅赛道等。另外，仲会提供调色板嘅桌上冰壶，让到更加多嘅学生能够享受到地虎球嘅乐趣。设置场地之前。我哋建議先清潔場地，以免地虎球因為塵埃被捲入地虎球底下嘅滑輪，或者場地上有其他物品而影響地虎球嘅滑行。清潔完場地之後，我哋可以正式設置場地。一般我哋會使用容易撕貼嘅皺紋膠紙，固定賽道嘅。Okay, so、uh, we try to make it more fun and lively, and then、uh, we、uh, introduce、uh, you know the equipment. Um, how to set up、uh, the equipment uh, um, in, uh, uh, on the playground or wherever. Uh, actually, we um, provide、uh, each participant school with free equipment. So that's why they just follow our videos. And of course, at that time, we also、uh, did a real-time demonstration at school. But because of the COVID, and so we、uh, sent them this video uh, uh, for reference. So this is、uh, for your information here. So how can we promote、uh, physical activity participation among children with disabilities? I think the inclusion spectrum is a very good practical model. And this model was proposed by、uh, Ken Black.、Um, in particular, you can see this、uh, circle here, um, different colors. So in here, the green color,、um, open activity. This means that everyone can play. In particular,、um, everyone is doing the same activity without Any adaptation or modification. For example,、um, everyone、uh, is doing one of activities together.、Um, individual differences are less obvious because they play together,、uh, such as、um, parachute game together, as an example. And we have the modified activity in particular. This means that everyone is doing the same activity, but changes made to rules. Space and equipment used in order to promote inclusion. Okay, for example, we may adjust the space, we may make changes to the task itself, or we can change or modify the equipment or whatever. Parallel activities here in green,、uh, purple color.、Uh, participants are grouped according to ability. So, in other words, everyone participates in the same activity, but at an appropriate level. So maybe. Um, the 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 participants, for example, do a robotic dance. Maybe one is standing, the other is, you know, sitting on a chair, for example. So based on their ability or their disability type, and we can also、uh, make um ability match songs within a larger activity and so on. 
and then alternate um, or separate activity. This means that in orange uh, color here, an individual group is doing purposefully planned separate activity. So in other words, uh, students uh, prepare individually or in a group or team for a disability sport event. So sometimes uh, in Hong Kong, it's very common for uh, our children with disabilities uh, to send to uh, the physio class. But for, of course, as physio is not PE, right? But sometimes they may have separate activity, for example. So finally here, you can see this disability sport here, uh, or adaptive physical activities uh, means that um, we um, include aspects of activities from disability sport or adapted activity programs in mainstream physical education. So for example, uh, sitting volleyball uh, could be a, a kind of reverse integration activity. This means that everyone can play sitting volleyball together regardless of having a physical disability or not. So here you can see the center, the step principle here, all right? So in other words, uh, when we talk about step principles, um, this means that um, we um, emphasis uh, on ability, not disability, okay? We also take uh, individual difference factors into consideration, given that everyone is unique, even uh, this, the, the one has um, physical disability, but uh, we know there are different types of even dis physical disabilities. So we, we need to tailor make and meet their developmental needs according to their type and severity of disability. So here you can see step and space, past, equipment, and people. So when we talk about space, uh, practitioners or uh, teachers uh, may want to adjust the size of playing area. So for example, if we want to promote interaction, maybe we want to make uh, the player playing area smaller. If you want to promote mobility, we may want to adjust the size of the player area bigger, okay? So we also want to vary the distance to the target to allow success. And we can also modify the playing area to make some safe songs uh, for those who have a lower ability level. In regard to tasks here, uh, we can ask the students to perform the tasks in a different way. So for example, when we talk about uh, throwing a ball, so we can use uh, overhand, underarm, side arm, or whatever. We can also break the skill down into smaller parts. In regard to equipment, uh, of course, we can use uh, specially adapted equipment uh, like a go ball uh, or even um, uh, in China, also in Japan, I also uh, have the chance to see uh, the specially adapted uh, equipment for table tennis. So you can see a rim um, surrounding, you know, the the, 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 the the table and also the ping ping pong ball, the ball, uh, is bigger with the bell inside. So it's kind of uh, adapted equipment. Of course, we can also use regular equipment uh, uh, to, to make modification, okay? So sometimes uh, we can use uh, regular equipment in a modified way. This means that we can use a smaller ball to facilitate throwing, and we can use a bigger ball to facilitate catching, all right? So, so this allows success. And then people, uh, we can adapt the way uh, that players interact. Uh, we can group, uh, you know, uh, participants uh, with similar ability or even with uh, the same team numbers or even for those who require intensive support, you can have a one-to-one, -one, you know, um, um, setting or whatever. All right, so I, I think um, this... Uh, that principle is very useful to guide us because we treasure individual differences and uniqueness and why we can make any adaptation in terms of space, task, equipment, and people so that we are able to meet their developmental needs according to their type and severity of disability.
So here is an example of, of aerobic dance. Here, um, you can see we make adaptation here uh, according to the um, set principle here. So I try to show you this very quickly. Low high point. 雙手伸直向前，先向左邊扭，再向右邊扭。好啦，我哋做多一次。而家雙手舉高過頭做大力士，將呼拉圈拉到下爬水平。舉高手時記得放鬆個人，做得好好啊！加油！我 OK， and so you can see we have three、uh, demonstrators. So the 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 middle one, you know, uh, is a kind of um um coach. Uh, we assume her huh, uh, with um average ability. Okay, so for those who need uh you know a seated version, he or she can follow this uh, coach, and for those with high ability, he or she can follow another coach on the left side. So this is. The adaptation that they can use. Of course, we also send、uh, this kind of equipment to every participating family. All right, so we send them this kind of video. We make many, as、uh, so、this is one of them. Okay, so other than that, we、uh, on top of the step principle, we also apply multi learning principles and activities. In particular, when we introduce a new game, in particular for those、uh, go ball or curling, which are new to our students. Okay. So when when you introduce this kind of new new game to、uh, children with disabilities, we use different strategies to constrain the environment so that students could reduce fewer errors during practice, especially in the initial stage of learning. Okay, so once the students were able to master the skills, we would then increase the difficulty of tasks progressively. All right. So this is in particular very useful because、um, our students,、uh, many of them have cognitive challenges. All right. So in particular, we don't provide any verbal instructions or the correct movement patterns because they just throw the ball towards the target. Um, they make the successful attempt to develop their self confidence, and then they can progress. So this is、uh, our principle. Um, so that's why we also make use of this、uh, errors reduced motor learning paradigm to、um, uh, in our intervention uh, 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 protocol. All right. So other than that, we、um, notice that there has been a lack of professional skill training in AP or special PE in Hong Kong. So that's why we work with overseas experts and associations to develop and organize professional training courses. To assist、uh, our teachers in developing their skill and competence in the field, and we still have these、uh, eight online courses, and、um, they are free of charge,、uh, self-paced, and、uh, once a participant registered, and then they can、uh, download uh, the uh, resources, and then、uh, to attempt a、uh, ten multiple、uh, questions. Okay.、Um, No failure. I、uh, no. I I mean, um, any attempt, unless you, uh, uh, until you achieved, uh, if I remember correctly, eighty percent of of of、uh, correct answers. So limited attempts. So after reading, <laughs> or learning our materials, and then you will be given, you know, uh, the certification endorsed by, uh, four organizations, including UNESCO. So we reach out more than、uh, five. Thousand children, families, and teachers through the concept of sport with the limits、uh, in our project here. So I'd like to make use of uh, this. Uh, we make a three minutes video to、uh, summarize、uh, what we achieve here. Okay. CUHK Department of Sports Science and Physical Education has organized the Jockey Club Sports Without Limits Youth Empowerment Program. Funded by the Hong Kong Jockey Club Charities Trust, the aim of the program is to empower children and youngsters with disabilities in Hong Kong special schools to get physically active, so as to promote their well-being and quality of life. 
It also aims at advancing the professional competence and practice of adapted or special physical education teachers and practitioners, as well as promoting social inclusion between children and youngsters with and without disabilities. To optimize quality physical education, the program has provided participating schools with electronic devices and technical support, including heart rate monitors and an interactive electronic whiteboard. Physical education teachers can keep track of students' activity levels and keep pace with STEM teaching and learning. To encourage students with disabilities to develop an exercise habit, the program has provided participating schools with diversified physical activity equipment. Four adapted sports including aerobic dance, curling, goalball and sitting volleyball are also introduced which allows students to experience different sports and build up self-confidence. The program has also organized school-based activities and fun days so as to explore their sports interests and talents. To promote the professional development of teachers, the program has organized numerous professional training workshops and webinars since 2019. The training courses assist teachers in developing adapted physical education, as well as planning, designing and implementing adapted physical activity programs. The courses have been endorsed by the UNESCO, the Global Schools Program initiated by the United Nations SDSN and SDSN Hong Kong, and various overseas adapted physical activity associations. To foster school home cooperation, the program has provided each participating family with home workout videos and a family exercise toolkit, thereby encouraging students and their parents to engage in exercise for fitness at home. The program has also organized a coloring competition and a slogan competition, with the aim of increasing their awareness of doing exercise and developing an active lifestyle. Since 2019, 29 Hong Kong special schools have participated in the program, covering more than 48% of Hong Kong students studying in special schools. A total of 12 primary and secondary schools have also joined the program to promote social inclusion. Recently, the program organized the Virtual Sports Challenge Without Limits event and hundreds of students with and without disabilities, their parents and teachers were doing exercise together thereby joining hands in achieving the concept of sports without limits and promoting social inclusion. We Yeah, and, and this project uh, was uh, concluded with our international symposium at that time. You know, David uh, uh, was one of the keynote speakers. Uh, unfortunately, it was not, not held in Hong Kong uh, physically. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, I'm able to organize uh, the conference in Hong Kong. All right, so here is a QR code. And uh, if you're interested, uh, you can uh, register and then uh, you will receive uh, the automatic uh, reply and then uh, my colleagues will send you the uh, link to access to the materials or whatever, so you can get up to eight uh, certifications uh, endorsed by um, uh, international organizations here. So uh, based on our um, project, we also make use of data uh, to um, analyze and then to publish uh, some of our work in international uh, journals here. So we collected um, the student level, teacher level, and parent level data. And we also uh, conducted a post-assessment to determine immediate effect. And the follow-up uh, at three months and follow-up at 12 months um, to determine the longer-term effect here. So I'd very quickly to uh, introduce to you um, three papers. We, we already published four papers, but we are going to submit the fifth one. And so uh, here, the uh, paper one, uh, based on our baseline data, we examined the association between physical activity levels and mental health in children with intellectual disabilities during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we just published uh, this data uh, in Journal of Autism and Developmental Dis uh, Disabilities a few weeks ago. So uh, participants were 117 children with intellectual disabilities from 10 special schools. And basically we found that there were positive association between physical activity and mental health 
and participants with higher levels of MVPA and self-concept had better social quality of life than those with lower levels of MVPA and self-concept. So we also found uh, personal and environmental factors such as sex, ID level, and parental education level influence the PA levels and the quality of life in children with intellectual disabilities. Specifically, uh, male participants with mild intellectual disability and higher parental educational levels reported higher levels of physical activity and quality of life than their counterparts. So this is our first study. And then uh, we also examined similar constructs. And this time we included 16 spectral schools and children with physical disability and intellectual disabilities. So basically we found um, the um, um, physical activity was positively associated with self-concept and self-concept significantly mediated the association between PA and quality of life. This means it's very important to promote self-concept in order to achieve quality of life. So there's a mediation effect here. And then another study uh, which was published in uh, Mental Health and Physical Activity again a few weeks ago. And um, we look at the effect of school-based intervention on quality of life and self-concept. So the previous two studies, we just look at the cross-sectional study based on the uh, baseline data here. We specifically examine the intervention effects. Um, the sample size little bit small, 58. Uh, from five spectral schools because we are still analyzing uh, a, a, a bigger sample size uh, in our database. But basically in this uh, smaller sample size, uh, we found that uh, positive, uh, we found positive intervention effects on physical activity levels and self-concept. And school PE intervention improved the quality of life through positive changes in self-concept in children with disabilities during the COVID-19 pandemic. So basically we found the construct of self-confidence uh, is very important, okay? In particular in our intervention um, uh, project. So as a final note, uh, in line with the WHO and the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and on the Rights of the Child, there's a present need to promote active behavior in every child with a disability everywhere and every day. There has been a call to action for efforts in physical activity promotion for achieving the WHO recommendations and the United Nations SDGs, including good health and well-being SDG 3, quality of education um, SDG 4, and reduce inequalities SDG 10 that involve multi-level drivers across sectors. So let us work together to make a brighter and more sustainable future for all, including children with disabilities. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I was told to have an hour for presentation, including um, Q and A. So maybe we have uh, ten minutes for Q and A then. Yeah. So I hand over to you then, David. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Sid. Um, that was great. I, um, I, I knew a little bit about some of the work that you were doing, but I didn't. I don't think I've gotten the full uh, spectrum of of some of the projects you've been involved with. So that was a fantastic opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about some of the work. That you've been doing, which aligns exactly with a lot of the projects that we're trying to implement here in a Calgary context, as it relates to the Calgary Adaptive Hub powered by Jumpstart. And truly, our mandate is exactly what you were talking about at the start of your presentation, which is to reduce physical inactivity um, amongst children and youth with disabilities. And I'm sure the people that are listening that are connected to the Calgary Adaptive Hub can certainly identify with many of the challenges and the issues that you spoke to from a Hong Kong context. And I think the one that I want to start with, and, I, and what I would encourage people to do is you can either use the chat function if you do want to ask a question, or you can just raise your hand and I'll, 
I'll acknowledge that. But if I may, uh, the first question that I want to ask, and I think this is one that we're having a difficulty with, you mentioned that one of the challenges, and particularly with the Active Healthy Kids Project led by Mark, Dr. Tremblay at, at the Children's, uh, at CHEO, and then also the University of Ottawa, is the lack of, of data and the inability to have a fulsome understanding of what children with impairments or with disabilities are doing in a physical activity space. Part of our mantra and our mandate in the Calgary Dabit Hub Powered by Jumpstart is to have evidence-informed programs. But we have a hard time getting participants to participate um, in our research and getting them to buy into that to that model. And I'm just curious to know, you know, if you ran into some of the some similar challenges in trying to get children and youth with disabilities to participate. And sometimes I worry that they're overstudied. Um, and there's that paternalistic, able-bodied person studying a person with an impairment. So there's that moral issue too. But I'm just curious if you could speak to some of the successes and perhaps some of the challenges that you face in just getting people to participate in the research so that you do have accurate data by which then to make these report cards. Yeah, to be honest, very challenging in there to um, make use of the project to collect data, to be honest. But uh, when we, uh, I don't want to use sell, but when we um, invite a participant, uh, you know, participating uh, special schools to join us. Um, we because we send them lots of equipment and resources. So um, we um, arranged um, the quotation for those like for adapter sports, and then we uh, find uh, the uh, companies, and then to send them uh, the set of adaptive equipment and then we have persons to um, demonstrate how to use them and we also um, provide them free of charge you know the set of polar sensors interactive whiteboard blah 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 and so that's why I think um, mm -hmm. we have to convince them uh, we send them the equipment the resources we want to promote active behavior and mental health or whatever so the, the teachers and the in particular school principals were very supportive. They know that uh, if you want to see the improvement in different indicators, we need data to set up evidence-based information to inform practice. So when we told them this kind of rationale, um, the, 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 the principals and teachers um, fully supported, and then they helped us to um, send out the consent forms to the parents, okay? So of course, they were also dropped out during the data collection process. We lost many participants, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, but we were trying very hard, you know, and then uh, promised the teachers and the schools that we will send them the um, assessment report so that they are able to keep track of the indicators whether the students or the children of their parents improve certain indicators because they participate in our program. Right. So uh, I think that's why when we um, introduce our program to every target special school actually before the COVID-19, during the recruitment process, I personally pay a visit to every special school right. to talk to every school principal right. about the rationale, blah, blah, blah. And so that's why maybe they they were touched, maybe, and also they understand, you know, the, 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 the importance of data that we collect. So, so, so as to have the women you know, collaboration and partnership. I, I'm, I'm just cognizant of time. And again, I'm not seeing oh. any questions on the chat or raised hand. So if I may, I'm going to ask one more question, one final question. Um, you talked about this APA education system that you had set up where people can take this course online um, and it's free of charge. What's What's been the impact of that? Um, has it been successful? I mean, we have a number of online programs 
that people can take for relatively low fee here in Canada, whether it's through Jumpstart, through our national coaching certification program, there are online MOOCs, massive open online courses. Bjorn, I'm, I'm looking at you. I know you've taken, you know, the one that focuses on Aboriginal Indigenous uh, persons, but I'm curious to know, like, like has, has this made an impact? These courses that people are taking in a Hong Kong context to become adaptive physical activity, not experts, but at least more attuned to it. And the, you know, the inclusion spectrum and the step process, has it made an impact? Has it made a difference? I think so, and I hope so. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in particular, um, we already, because we, um, um, every time, you know, when I have my presentation, also issue this kind of um, training opportunity and then uh, send them the QR code or whatever. So uh, many people are fascinated about it. And also, uh, usually they may take one or two courses, but not really up to eight courses because uh, one or two courses, the first or second courses of the prerequisites about, you know, uh, set principles or whatever. And then since then the other courses um, focus on city volleyball global, more specific, you know, topics. Uh, so far we have, uh, I think more than 600 uh, mm -hmm. participants in the um, um, joining these. Um, I, I also need to get the accurate data um, how many of them really get this certification? So uh, for sure that because uh, we want them to make the course a little bit challenging in order to get the certification right. recognized, you know, internationally. So that's why we still, we, we set up, you know, the um, assessment, but it seems to be challenging, but still easy way out. <laughs> 10 multiple choice questions, whatever, unlimited attempts. As long as you achieve 80% correct uh, answers, you can get it anyway. So uh, self-paced, free of charge. But of course, uh, it doesn't mean that everyone uh, would take it, to be honest, but it needs more uh, promotion. And if they understand uh, the, the, the high quality of the training courses and also the international certification, I think they are more likely to, to mm. register and take the courses. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Sit, we've, we've reached the end of our time, and I know that a number of my friends and colleagues need to step away for their next meetings or their next events at one o'clock here in, in a Calgary time zone anyways. No problem, um, I will go to bed. I was just going to say, <laughs> and we need to get some sleep. Um, thank you so very You're much. You're welcome. Uh, on behalf of the Calgary Adapted Tub Powered by Jumpstart for joining us this morning for you and this afternoon for us. It was a real pleasure uh, to hear your presentation. Um, lots for us to glean and to take and to apply in a Calgary context. So on behalf of the Calgary Adaptive Hub Powered by Jumpstart, thank you again. Uh, good day to those of you that are in attendance. It's a pleasure to see you um, and I look forward to, to connecting again in the future. Thank you. Yeah, sure. My honor and pleasure. If you have anything to let me know, I'm very pleased to share more uh, with you all. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.